okay so uh, bismillah uh, actually the the article idea is extremely difficult that's why i i prefer that you should start using plural nouns so you're not you're not you're going to to avoid using or making mistakes so uh, here in this sentence i received all your answers and before we can before we can say which answer is correct i would like to tell you that your participation is highly appreciated we will never say no we will never say your answer is wrong we will never blame you for anything why because we're here to learn so may feel safe to make mistakes i like making mistakes and i would like you to pardon me if i asked you what do you think about the answer to this question i'm not testing your knowledge never i will never do this it's just that we would like you to share ideas we'd like to share ideas because the more the more you share the better will the better understanding we will have together because sometimes sometimes you may think that you understand one point perfectly but when you check it with another person it may seem that you missed the point that's why you have to share your ideas and feel free to make mistakes as we said so here in this sentence we're going to say it is the KFC near my home because we refer to a specific one. The KFC shouldn't go with our articles because it's a well-known uh, well brand. And But here we, we're referring to a specific one. Okay. Now, here. Okay. It's the same idea, guys. We Sorry. need you to use an article. Sorry for the interruption, but I want to tell you something for the previous uh, example. Um, do you remember the five-minute uh, uh, video that you uploaded on uh, the page of um, EVS that the students just read the first two or three words and then they start answering the question? Do you remember? I did the same yes. thing. No, I didn't read the whole, the whole sentence. <laughs> Guys, the um, uh, uh, Radwa can share the video with you. I know that, uh, mashallah, your teachers, and we're uh, just sending some, um, let's say, some recommendations to our dear brothers and sisters. And uh, there is a video. At, it's not five minutes, mashallah. It's two minutes only. So you can share the video with them because this is really important. Guys, you have to teach your students this because it's really killing. Okay, so you have you have a partner. You're not alone, Radwa. You have Sana as well. So, guys, now let's answer this one. It's it's so close to the first one. I mean, on the same topic. Oh, mashallah. Okay, so still, still, Miss Dua has the same answer. Okay, who else? Who else, guys? Mashallah, you're like seventeen now. I expect at least 17 or 18 answers mashallah now we have different ideas okay some there some no article some no article there no article there no article okay so here these dozens rats were caught scurrying around a kfc can i say a kfc yes when i refer to one branch in kfc so it's not no article here. You can say a KFC. A KFC means one branch of KFC without referring to that specific one. Because if we refer to that specific one, we're just going to say the KFC. Okay? Okay. Uh, so mm -hmm. as I said, that this is really confusing. So if you're going to do the IELTS exam, make sure to avoid any confusion. Make sure that you just use something that you're pretty sure this is the answer to. Because if you're confused about something, you're going to um, just lose some points that we don't want you to use. Uh, uh, my first part here is register. Can anyone suggest or explain what is register here? When I speak about English language, what's register? Any ideas? Yeah. Yeah, okay, Mr. Mr. Yeah. Go ahead. yeah. 
go, uh, go ahead, Mr. Abdul. Yeah, let me ask you, what do you mean by your register? Is this according to words or as for writing at first? Oh, Mr. Yeah. Abdullah, uh, I asked the question first, so you should answer me first. I said, what do you know about yeah, register yeah, I, I or know, what I is know. register? I know, I know. Yes. Uh, uh, you would like to... me to make it simpler? No, 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 no. Easier? Let, let, me, let me clarify my point. I mean, we have two kinds of registers. This is a for, for words, that uh, means that the meaning related to a given word. But if you wanna, uh, if you wanna me to give you a register in writing, register in writing means I have to use a word in a certain or a particular situation. Okay, thank, so I guess that, uh, thank you for the information. This is yeah. really beneficial. I'm just referring to sentences. I'm not referring to words. So yes. what do I mean by register for uh, sentences? So let's see, guys. Read quickly and tell me what do we mean by register? Yeah. Thank you so much, Ms. Sana. And thank you, Ms. Dua, uh, Ms. Dalia, I'm sorry. Thank you, guys. I highly appreciate your participation. Tell me more. So what do we mean by register? Yes, yeah, the idea of formal. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Uh, whether you're using formal or informal language. Yes. So, guys, do you think that if you're doing if you're doing the IELTS exam, do you think you're doing it, doing the writing in the formal or informal way? Of course, formal. 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 So, no informal language in the IELTS exam. Maybe in the speaking parts. Uh, yeah. Yes, only. maybe. Excellent, excellent. And mashallah, mashallah, you have one of the best IELTS speaking exam trainers in the whole world, mashallah. Diana is a super, super trainer, mashallah. So here, as we refer to, we're using here, or we're talking about the passive and an active voice. So the passive and active, yes, thank you so much, Ms. Um, it's really needed. I do, I do recommend that you should use somehow some passive in the exam. Of course, of course, you're not going to do that frequently, or you're not going to use more than one sentence in the same paragraph because it may seem weird, but you should, you should. It's recommended that you should at least like one sentence and so on. So here, where I'm not going, of course, to tell you what's a, what's a passive and what's a sentence, what's a, an active sentence, because mashallah, you know more than me concerning these. I'm looking, I'm looking at the chat. Please type me an active sentence, change it into passive. Here, you know that you're going to do this in the same post. So send me the two sentences in one post. See, some people are uh, typing. She ate her sandwich. The sandwich was eaten by her. Thank you. Thank you. First to react. The government builds a lot of blocks. The farmers planted the seeds. He did the homework. He's a clever one. Thank you. Hamza locked the door. The door was locked. Thank you so much. They... Wait, the train, the train is waited. Yes, and they waited and the train never came. Blocks are built. Thank you, Mr. Abdullah. She's doing her homework. Her homework is being done. She bought a new mobile. And what happened after she bought the new mobile? The cat chased the mouse. The seeds were planted by the farmer. Thank you so much. So much, Allah. No needless to say that your answers are all correct, mashallah. So, um, can anyone some if you can speak the if you can speak in the mic the, that would be great. Can anyone just tell us uh, what is an active sentence? Uh, can Any I Any idea? Sure. Uh, an active sentence is when the subject is clear, the doer of the verb is clear in the sentence. So simple, so clear, mashallah. Thank you so much, Mrs. Dahlia. You would like to add something, but I interrupted you. I'm so sorry. Go ahead. Uh, no, that's it. <laughs> that's it. I tell. Okay, I have, thank. Uh, I hold my answer. Masha'Allah, Masha'Allah. So it's so clear, as our dear sister, Mrs. Dahlia, says, uh, an active sentence is when the subject is well known to everyone. 
So this is an active sentence, and mashallah, you listed more than one correct uh, active sentence. Now, can anyone explain what is a passive one? The passive one starts with the agent or the object of the sentence. Yes. Yes, and we yes, focus yes. on the action, not the subject. Yeah. Very, very clear. Very clear. Thank you so much. What else can we say about the passive one? Where the subject is unknown. So we can... Mr. Ahmed, I guess you're, you're the one who's speaking, so please raise your voice. Mahmoud, Mahmoud. Mahmoud, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No problem. So when, when, the, uh, when the subject or the doer of the, uh, something is not clear, so we use uh, the passive voice. Or... When that's the, that's one uh, or, yes. or when the action is more important than the subject or the doer perfect super mashallah so we use the passive voice for more than one uh, idea as mr mahmoud said we can use it because the verb itself is more important than the subject what happened what happened is really more important than who did it and maybe that we just care about the, we don't care about who the subject is. Uh, imagine, guys, that you lost like uh, 10 pounds. And when you go home, when you go home to your family, you say, oh, I lost my money or my money is lost. They will say, who took it? You, don't, you, you say, no, don't care about who took it. I lost my money or my money is lost. So here we focus on this, on the verb. Or we focus on what happened. And we don't care about the subject as one way of changing passive into, into active into passive. And here is an example, guys. Look at this. It's so easy when I say John kicked the ball. The ball was kicked. Um, and they say that we use passive because it makes more suspense. Like when I, if I, if for someone comes and says, guys, Ibrahim stole my bag. Compare this sentence when the same person comes and say, guys, my bag was my bag. My bag was stolen. Which one makes more suspense? Tell me your ideas. The first or the second? The, second. the passive one. Second. The, the second, passive. Yeah. Second one is extremely amazing, and it creates suspense, and people will start to say, "When? Why? Who did it?" But when you give them all the information, okay, we don't care. Thank you so much. We hope that you you find your bag. So, for the active one. Of course, that you, we're going to write many active sentences in the IELTS written exam, and we're going to say this in speaking. It's logical. It's logical to say more active sentences rather than passive. But it makes a difference when you start using an, an, a passive one. So here, when I say the cat ate the mouse, thank you so much. Yes. So here, the subject. And the verb is eight, and the mouse is the recipient or the object. Um, if we just re uh, inverted the structure or moved the words, exchanged their places, we can have the passive form. When I say the mouse was eaten by the cat. Can you explain in the chat, please, how did I form the passive one? So if I need to make passive sentences, how should I structure them? Which one comes before which? Yes, any ideas here? How can I structure the passive sentence? How can I structure the passive sentence? MashaAllah, we got the first so one from the object. Uh, yes, yeah, we, start with the, we start with the object, Ferris. Yes. After that, yes. Uh, verb to be in the same tense of the sentence. MashaAllah. Yeah, we got the similar ideas to what you both said, guys, in the chat, because people said that we start with the object and we say that the recipient of the Up, action, then the action that, itself the in a PP form. Yes, preceded by a auxiliary verb, which is verb to be, uh, according to the real tense or the, the, the actual tense of the active sentence. Then some people, why, guys, can I tell you, can, you, uh, can I ask you why some people wrote by plus the subject or some people just didn't care about that? Which one is better for you guys or for the lesson itself? Let, let's not ask about you. Shall I use by and use the subject? Okay, uh, so 
if it is important, we can use. If it is important to mention. Okay, can you explain more, please? What do you mean by if it is important? Can anyone explain? If 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 it is uh, important that we know uh, uh, who ate the the mouse, so we can uh, we who can ate, put who, who ate the cheese. the cheese. Who ate the cheese, right? Uh, yes, of course. I have to say who ate the cheese. Okay, thank you so much, brother. And I received the. Um, I I'm still looking at your chat, guys, to see your answers. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Ms. Wala. Okay, so. Um, for me, for me, I do not really like to mention the subject because this is what creates the suspense. If I if I told you who stole the bag, if I told you who who ate the cat, then it it it's worth nothing to change and from active into passive. However, as my dear brother says, if it's important, I have to mention this because sometimes I can say the city was destroyed. This is, I guess, this is incomplete. But when I say the city was destroyed by an earthquake, th this is better. So you have to mention the reason. Okay, so here, as we said that we changed the order by replacing the recipient in the beginning of the sentence instead of the old subject that we talked about. So here, the Porsche shot the tiger. Can you please change this into the passive form? Can you change this into the passive form? Waiting. Here, the yes. Tiger was, uh, the tiger was pushed, uh, was shot. MashaAllah, yes, that's really, that's really great. So here, yes, this is the answer. Thank you. So the, the tiger was shot. You can use by plus the subject or you can do without. They, they are all the same. Okay, now here, it's the same because eight is in the past simple and you, I guess that you sh you notice the difference between the, the active verb and the passive. The active verb is the word shot. And when I change it into passive, I make sure, you, may, you must make be sure that you change the verb into the PP or the past participle form, the third one, plus verb to be, which is was here. Okay. So now here is the second one. Okay, here in this in this uh, slide, go through the slide quickly. They just tell you uh, how to change the order of the sentence. But there is a there is a problem here. What about intransitive verbs? Intransitive verbs do not have subject, so it it can't be made passive. So sometimes you can't make passive out of the sentences, guys. So you have to take care of this. Okay, here, here, Leonardo painted the Mona Lisa. Can I say, if, if you just change the order and you said the Mona Lisa painted Leonardo, this is painted. truly incorrect. So how can I make it correct, guys? Was painted. Yes, I have to add verb to be. Do not forget this. You have to add verb to be. Perfect. Uh, okay, the chat is frozen here. I don't know why. No, now I got the answers, mashallah. Thank you so much. Uh, the chat was frozen, so I did read uh, Ms. Sana or uh, Ms. Sahar or Ms. Aya's uh, sentences. Thank you so much. So here, I have to cross this because it's it's there is something missing, which is verb to be. Okay. Do not forget verb to be, guys. Now, this is the right or the correct form of the passive structure in this sentence. Here. Make sure you're familiar with the various forms of verb to be. Of course, guys, you know that if the verb, if the verb is a study, you're going to change it into am, is, are, studied. It, but if it's a studied, you have to choose was, where, studied. Was, where. So, yes, if you have a question, look at this, look at this table. And if you have a question, feel free to ask. Here, we have different tenses. We have the active voice. 
and how we change the same sentence in the same tense into an, a passive one. Yes, yes, thank you. Thank you. Here. Any questions? Okay. Now, this is the, the question that we have previously uh, answered. I asked you, why do we use the passive? And mashallah, you gave me correct answers. When you said that basically we use the passive in two different ways. When the receiver of the action is more important than the doer, we don't care about the doer. We care about the receiver or the recipient. And maybe we don't know, we don't know the doer. We don't know the doer. So how can I say that the, the one who stole my bag is Ibrahim? How do I know? I, I don't know. Uh, can you give me a sentence, guys, in which we don't know the, the subject? If we start with when the, the subject is, is not some, known. Some, somebody. An somebody. Act, excellent. Yes. Yes. Go somebody, ahead. Somebody, someone. Yeah. Yes, when we use uh, an indefinite subject, yes. like when we say somebody, somebody someone, stole the bag, yes, someone somebody, left uh, that bag here. Yes, yeah. someone. Thank you so much, Ms. Harris. Okay, so here, here, when we use the passive, it is made more interesting. Sentences is made more are are made more interesting. On the road was written by Jack. That's the name of a story. Lord of the Rings was directed by Peter Jackson. The light bulb was invented by Thomas Edison. So this is, um, this is a better version of the same sentence when I say Thomas Edison invented the light bulb. It's more important and more, it's a higher, of a higher standard. Um, Sometimes we don't care about the doer. It's not important to mention who did this, but the creation itself is more important. And this is what you have already said. Someone has eaten my ice cream. Oh, poor, poor sister. Oh, you have to care for your ice cream. Uh, especially at home, when you're at home, just keep it so close. So here, we also use the passive voice when we don't know or we don't need to say, Sometimes I'm afraid of the subject. I can't say that Mr. Abdullah took the Ibrahim's pen. So I just go to Ibrahim, say, Ibrahim, your, your pen was taken. Your pen was stolen. Your pen was broken. I know it's Abdullah, but I can't say. I'm afraid. So here, I don't know. I don't know. The woman was murdered. I don't know who. Huh, they were arrested after the match. Of course, it's the police. So I don't have to say. So there are some uh, known things that we need. We, we don't need to include in our spe speech. Okay, now, uh, what, when exactly should we use the passive voice in IELTS? Of course, it will be in, maybe in speaking, while you're speaking. And here are some examples. My favorite book is The Catcher in the day. So because you know that they are going to ask you about some of your interests. So you're, go you're going to use some passive here. I like rock music. One of my favorite sing songs is The Child of Mine. It was sung by, it was sung by, this is really great. Okay, guys, look at this example and tell me if it's a familiar one or it's weird. Yes? Is it a familiar structure, guys? Do we say this? No. No. Okay, what about this one? It's okay. What about this one? Okay. No, number two is okay. Okay. Number three. So the three sentences 
just are listed under the same category. We do not recommend that you use such stuff, okay? Because these are all intransitive verbs, so you just you just don't need to change them into the the passive voice. You just mention them in the active one. Here we recommend that it's a if you're describing a process or something which is in task yeah. one we're gonna explain this in detail later you mm -hmm. use you use passive so here are some sentences that you can go through them quickly yeah. okay so in task two the passive voice can help make a text more formal of course if mm -hmm. it's used Perfectly. Okay, here. Just go through the, the the slide and read the sentences, and tell me what did you understand. What about the first passive sentence? The city may be visited by more tourists. What do you understand here? Why did you use passive? We don't know any ideas we don't know the number of the tourists okay thank you who else yes who else maybe in in order to encourage the government to do or to care with uh, the city mashallah mashallah thank you so much both friends and thank you mrs sana because uh, mrs sana added that we don't care we don't care about the visitors we care about our city it's it may be visited this is what we care for thank you so much what about the city's profile is raised significantly it's the same idea we care about the action we care about our city we don't care about the doer or the subject of the uh, of the sun of, of the two sons yes it's the same idea thank you so much um uh, of course you're not going to use one type of sentences and this is what we refer to while explaining the different types of sentences so sometimes you use active then you use passive, active passive and so on okay now we i would like you to share your ideas uh, first of all is this active or passive you can type in the chat a or p a for active p for passive if you don't like to speak Active, yeah. Okay, active. Uh, may I ask you, how did you know? Yes, because we have the subject, the verb. We have the, the subject, object. that's it. Yeah. Yes, subject is clear here. Mashallah. Yes, yes, perfect. Now change it into passive. You had, you better type this in the chat. We have to wait. How can in I order, change it? Yeah, yeah, we have to wait to change the sentence into passive. I can mm -hmm. say it's, it's said that children love chocolate. Perfect. Or, yeah, or, or or we can say children are said to love chocolate. MashaAllah, so as Mr. Abdullah uh, perfectly explained, you have two ways. Either you say it's, belie it's believed that children love yeah. chocolate or children are believed to love chocolate. So both, both ways fit. And I guess that you need to use this structure in the uh, task one, inshallah, when we come to task one. Task one. Okay, this is honey tastes sweet. This is an active sentence. How can I change it into passive? So it's the same. Uh, we're just going through the lesson as I told you. We're just revising what, what do we know, or we remind you with some of the rules. So it is that but if you use the the previous structure, it's amazing. Yes. Yeah, it's believed that honey is sweet. Perfect. Perfect. I can say so. Yes. Any other ideas? Hello, my dear friends. Where are you? Just share ideas. All your ans all your answers are perfectly appreciated. So here, we can say honey is sweet when tasted. That's a, that's a way we, in which we can change things. Like our dear brother who said it is believed that the honey is sweet so le, 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 this is let one me have a try let me have a yes. try in another way yeah i can say honey is believed to have a sweet taste mashallah that's that's truly a better <laughs> sentence than the sentence written here thank you mr abdullah 
Thank you so much. Guys, uh, I said as a, um, it's, a recomm it's highly recommended that you start sharing ideas as I, I, as I told you for two reasons. One reason is that we learn from each other. The second reason is I do believe that uh, some of us may, may have a confusion about something and we think that we're correct. But when we start discussing, we may find that we can change our uh, points of view. Okay, so here, here, Mr. Abdullah, please, yeah. will you please repeat your answer? It's okay. I, I said that. The last one, the previous one. Yeah. yeah about yeah. honey. Yeah. Honey is believed to have a sweet taste. MashaAllah. Thank you so much. Welcome. Uh, Radwa, remind me to change my sentence into Mr. Abdullah's, please. I like it. Yeah, I really appreciate it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, guys, now who can change this sentence into a passive one? Any ideas? Yeah. Yes. I had the lamp. I had the lamp installed. This is called causative, causative, causative have, yeah. Okay, guys, uh, I, I'm sure that you all know what is uh, the causative form. And the causative form is when you have something done to you because it's yours, but you're not the one who did it. You have somebody else who did it for you. So that's why I say I had a, the lamp installed. You have the subject, verb to have, and the, the object, then the PP of the verb. If you compare the two sentences, you just re remove I called an electrician. You just remove it. Because, you yes. know, if I if I told you that I had the lamp installed, of course, you got an electrician. So I don't think you got a footballer to do so. So I had the lamp installed. That's okay. Yeah. Hmm. It's okay. the same idea, guys. So if you don't if you don't know the previous rule, you can try now. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm looking at the chat. I'm looking at the poor chat. It's miskeen. Oh, somebody sent something. Okay, Radwa. To everyone, Radwa. I get, May Allah I get, bless you, Radwa. Yes, May Allah I, bless you. Yeah, I get. I get yes. my hair. I get my haircut every month. Guys, um, Mr. Abdullah is adding here that we can use get instead of verb to be. So it gives the same idea. So I had my haircut. Yeah. Yes. I I have my hair. Oh, yeah. Yes. I have my haircut because yeah. here it's a it's a, a present, present. Uh, sample. Present sample. Yeah. Present sample. Now yes, this is the active voice is more common, of course. However, however, for better understanding, for better English, you still can use the passive voice. Okay, so now it's time for you to do and to do an online game. So please. Feel free to, uh, I'm gonna pause this. No, no, I'm not going, not going to pause it. I'm sending you in the chat now, a link to a, an online game and I would like you to play it individually. But I hope that, it, yes. Uh, if you have questions about, about the passive, of course, there are too many rules that we haven't mentioned here, but. We guess that they are all so easy, inshallah. And if you have a if you have a question, you can ask in the WhatsApp group. And do not forget that you have some sheets to help you, if you would like to have to look at them. Okay, so let's okay. see. Are you ready for? Um, have have has anyone guys looked at the outline today? Do you know what we're studying today? Huh. <laughs> yes, active and passive. Thank you so much, Ms. Sana. This is really perfect. Uh, Radwa, I guess that you should send me the link. Send them one of the links, Radwa. Because uh, which one? My computer is crashing. The first one. Make it live and send it to them. Yes, Miss Iman, thank you so much. Uh, wait, wait, it's working now, alhamdulillah. 
Okay. Alhamdulillah. Okay, so mashallah, many people, uh, two people said that we're studying active and passive. Thank you so much. This is really helpful, guys. I don't know what should I do with if you didn't answer this. Okay. Okay, okay. Active and passive here. Yes. I hope it works. Get ready here. Here we go. Here we go. Yes. Central. Yes, here. Where? Uh, guys, look at the chat. Here is. Here is the link. Please join my game. Please join my game. Anyone? MashaAllah, we have two. We have three, four, five. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. You can start now.
Now, can you hear me? I can hear you, but the mute, yes, I can hear you now. Okay, have you finished, guys, or you're still playing? Still. Okay, I'm take still your time. Playing. Only take time. your time, take your time. There is something, there is somebody walking behind us, I think. Okay. Hello. What? We can hear you. Done, mashallah. Hussein? Yes. I finished. MashaAllah. Okay, who's still doing the, the, the game, guys? Who's still playing? I finished. I'm still, I'm still oh, playing, sorry. Mr. Hussein. I'm sorry. MashaAllah. Yeah, MashaAllah. Great, Ms. Sahar. Thank you so much. So get ready for the second part of our uh, session today. Who else is still playing rather than Aya, guys? Who else? MashaAllah, thank you so much, Mrs. Iman. Yes? Great, great. Thank you. So get ready and let's think of the second part of our session. Aya, you finished? Have you finished? Not yet, Mister. Just four points are remaining. Four two days ago, you said I have only two points. Now you said four points are left. I'm a very, I'm a very slow person. I'm sorry for that. <laughs> okay, so uh, mashallah, Mrs. Dahlia had a look at uh, our outline, and she said that we have if condition use. This is great. Thank you so much for your participation. Yes, guys, the next part will be if. 
You now know what are we going to do? Yes, it's if. Can you tell me guys about your memories with that difficult lesson when you were a student? I'm not talking about when you were a, a teacher now, when, you, when you're a teacher now. Do you remember if Mr. Abdullah, when you were a student? I'll meet yourself. Yeah, I remember, yeah. <laughs> Could Something you answer like... the question? <laughs> Could you answer the questions? Yes, as you mentioned, this word, all the students in your class are laughing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Perfect. Yes. Okay, guys, if you have if you have any idea about uh, if as a student it's yes because it's 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 really it's really confusing and yeah. difficult uh as a student i'm not talking about teachers because teach that there is nothing hard for a teacher or difficult for a teacher so for students i remember when i was young i guess when i was in second prep or something yeah. and one of my friends my, one of my friends who had um an older brother told me, oh, English in the secondary stage is extremely difficult. I told him why. He, he, told, he told me, they have a lesson called if. You're, you will never understand this lesson. He said that. Uh, then he said, my older brother told me so. And mashallah, I went to the secondary stage and alhamdulillah, I didn't understand the lesson. It was, he was, he was true. Uh, but when I started working as a teacher, I found that it's so easy. Oh, mashallah, we have uh, someone who loves if. I don't know if you're, refer if you're referring to the poem if or the grammar lesson if. Tell me, tell me, Ms. Dua, which one? I like if conditions. I think oh. it's, it's, it represents your idea as well. So that's why I like Okay, so guys, today you have a new teacher. Say hello to your teacher, Ms. Dua. Ms. Dua is going to teach you if now. I know she's. Oh my God, I am 17 years old. <laughs> no, you teacher. said. Uh, sorry? I am 17. I can be your teacher. No, a teacher can be a teacher. We don't care about ages, just a number. You're going to teach us if today, okay? Uh, guys, say hello to your new teacher, please, in the chat. Mr. Hussein, I'm sorry, but but I have I have to speak to Dwai. <laughs> Dwai, you are 17 years old. Oh, she's that's, she's envying you. Don't tell her. Don't tell, tell her I'm 37. She's no, going no. to envy you. That's a woman. That's a lady. That's a lady talk now. <laughs> no. Ah yes. Oh. You are you are in college, Dwai? No, I'm she's, in I'm a, I'm a senior in high school. Yes. Really? Yes. Yes. Hmm. Yes. Hmm. Okay, so why are you joining us? I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not like um, asking for, for, for anything. Just want to know why do you join the IELTS course? Um, she joined. My mom. She joined. <laughs> my mom said that it's going to help me. In it this will, it will. Day. Yes. So I joined. And I have so much free time compared to other. Actually, I'm impressed Mashallah. with Allah. I'm impressed with you. That's why I'm asking Mashallah. you. Mashallah. <laughs> Don't believe her. Don't believe her. No woman is impressed that uh, another woman is younger than her. She's no. lying. Okay. So, so Dua, Mashallah, you're going to be my assistant today. Okay. Or I'm going to be your assistant. It, it doesn't matter. So, guys, it's if today. And... Um, MashaAllah, oh, we have Aya also 17, but don't tell Radwa Aya because she's jealous. Okay, <laughs> so here we have if conditionals, if conditionals. Uh, of course, you're going to use much of the second and the third conditionals. Okay, let's see what do we have here today. Uh, we're going to start with the game. So guys, complete this. I, I would like to see your answers in the chat. Please type, complete my sentence. If I were rich, I would buy a what card. would happen? I would buy a card. Okay. Oh, okay. Just, okay. If you, if you would like to speak, speak. If you would like to type in the chat, just send me. I, I would build a new house. This is, okay. the, second this is the second condition. Yeah. Okay. Great. Great. 
MashaAllah, yes, who else? I, I would buy a car. Uh, I would help poor people. Um, I would travel. MashaAllah, yes, I would travel around. Oh, someone will travel as well. Iman is traveling. I would go to Malaysia. Oh, I hope to go to Malaysia, wallah. I will buy a villa. Okay, Iman. Okay, great. MashaAllah, Miss, uh, Miss Sana sent you I would and left the, the rest to me. Okay, I would be happy. Okay, so, so guys, I would like you to follow my example because I like this example so much. So if I were rich, this is for Hussein. If I were rich, it's recorded and I hope that my wife doesn't see this. Okay, don't tell her, Radwa. If I were rich, what would happen? I would. If I were rich, I, I would marry a second wife because I'm, I'm, I'm rich. So I would marry a second wife. And what will happen after I marry? I said, be happier. The, the, the core of the topic, it's about happiness. Mm -hmm. So why can't I be more happier? So if I were rich, I would marry a second wife. If I married a second wife, I would be happier. Yes, we are Mustafa Buhagar. Yes, of course, of course, of course. And so if I were happier, of course, that's normal, Mr. Abdullah. I would marry the third one. And... If I married the third one, they would kill me at the end. So that's a nightmare. I'm not going to go through this. Or I'm going to just apply till rule number three, till, till sentence number three. So um, here is, if, as you explained, mashallah, if I were rich, I would have, uh, I, um, I would have wings to fly. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, man, fly, 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 fly. So if plus past simple, Yes. Uh, on the other on the other side, you would get wood plus stem verb, but this is really confusing. This is the F two, and it's really confusing because pe people treat or deal with this rule as a past past sentence. This is not in the past; it's present. No. So we have no, to take yes, care yes. of this because students consider this sentence as a past tense sentence, but it's not. It's a present present one. But we imagine things. We imagine things to happen. To it, happen. It's, a, it's a called unreal past. Unreal English past, yeah, mashallah. Yeah, yes, yes, unreal past. And uh, to make sure that it's unreal past, you say, if I were, because it, normally I was. If you, if you used was, it is correct, but it's better to say where. Yeah. Okay? So, and here, this is the zero conditional. If you heat ice, it melts. If you boil water, it evaporates. This is really a piece of cake for you, I know. This is fact, yes. yes, yes, yes. And you can use if in the beginning, you can use if in the middle. In we the don't middle. care about this. We, yeah. If you used it in the beginning, then you have to use a comma. Don't forget Ms. Sana. Huh? Okay. Now, uh, I will attend the party provided that he invites me. So here, provided that equals if. You can use provided, provided that instead of if. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now she will pass the test only if she studies hard. Only if. Yeah. Yes. Do not confuse it, guys, because we have a similar idea to this. We're, we're going to take or uh, talk about this later. So she will pass the test only if she studies hard. Only if equals if as well. And you can borrow my camera as long as you give it back. As you long give as it back. As long as you, you give it back. So as long as. Provided, provided that only if are all, they all can replace if. Yes, in case. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. Unconditioned that, whether yeah. or not. Okay, so they all can replace if. Here, in case of, as Mr. Abdullah said, in case or in case of, but because we have the word of, you have to, it, it has to be followed yeah. by verb plus yeah. ing or a noun. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. In case of getting his passport, he will travel abroad. She will pass the test with studying hard or by studying hard. Even these two can replace um, if, but you have to uh, just use a gerund after these two or a noun. Okay, it's not only this. You can also use the word suppose or supposing. Supposing you don't find a job next month, what will you do? It's the same. Like if, if you don't find a job next by next week, 
what will you do? It's the same idea. So suppose, supposing, what if, imagine, what would happen if, so the all can replace if. Assuming that Hillary invited you to, the, to her house, would you go? Assuming that is also can or, or can just replace if. And these are all the other um, words that we can use as if. Okay, now let's go. Even if, even if can also come in the, in the if sentence. He wouldn't talk about his plans, even if you begged him to. Uh, you're probably tired, given that you were out all day. Given that, given that can replace if. Given or given that, you know, that we can use that or we can do without. Okay, guys, can you use if plus an adjective? Any ideas? Can you tell me a sentence in which you use if plus adjective? Yes? Okay, I'll give you an example and you can just tell me. So you can say, if possible, I'd like a room with a view on the beach, if it's possible. So you can just say, if possible. Can you give me more examples? One more example. On the same scale, guys. Use if plus an adjective. Yes. Who's ready? Where are my good friends? Someone sent. If allowed, yeah, excellent, excellent, excellent. MashaAllah, if possible, I would leave the room. Why are you leaving? Stay. Okay, okay, Dua. Thank you, Ms. Dua. Okay, so here, if in doubt or when in doubt, you know that uh, when and if can replace each other. If delicious, I eat it. Allah, that's a good example. If accepted, I will join. Okay, you're accepted, Mrs. Aya, you know. So you can use if in doubt or when in doubt. So here, if in doubt, contact your physician. If you are in doubt. So these are two rules that you can use as well. If so, here, in my train this afternoon, if so, I'll come pick you up. If so, refers to the sentence before it. If this happened, it's the same idea. If any, there is a little hope, if any, that he will survive. There is a little hope or no hope that he will survive. Mr. Hassan, I have a question. May I ask? Yes, sure. Could you please go back to the last, uh, the previous uh, slide? Sure. Yes. And uh, now I'm this looking one? at, the, yeah, the colon, uh, the uh, the comma, and the semicolon. Please uh, uh, click one more. Um, yes. Now, why, if so, there is a semicolon and a comma, while if any semicolon, uh, co uh, two commas. Because we said that a semicolon uh, just connects two sentences that are very related to each other. Maybe one is the reason for the other. Or, so there is a relationship. So we said if it, it, it might rain this afternoon. So if it rained, I will come pick you up. Okay. There's a little hope. If any. So if any here, if any here can be dropped out because you have two commas. Do you remember this when we explained the, um, the relative close? Hello? No. Sana? You don't remember? Okay, so whenever you, whenever you have two commas, you can drop the sentence in between. So if you say, there is a little hope that he will survive, that's a complete yes. sentence. Yes, it's, yes, it's, yes. Okay. Uh, you're going to dream about uh, commas and semicolon. I'm not going to use them again. They, they are scaring you, right? <laughs> so you can yes. use if plus a, plus a participle uh, PP word. So if taken, when you feel a cold coming out, the vitamins can help you feel. What, what do we mean by if taken? 
if uh, I'm referring to the vitamins, and they were explained in the second part, if they are taken when you feel cold. So you can use if plus a participle. Now, uh, classic words that can replace uh, if, which are unless, unless or except if, or if not, plus subject verb. So you will be late if you don't hurry, unless you hurry, except if you hurry. So they are all the same. We go on the same scale. Without, it's the same, it means if not, but it's followed by verb plus ing. <clears throat> you will fail. Now, I would like you to share your ideas with me. I would like to use the word should here. I'm waiting to see your answers. I'm not going to speak. And instead of if. Yes, excellent. So how can I form the sentence now? Which yes, excellent. Hard. She will pass the test. Perfect. So guys, you should know that you can use should in if one or if two. So here, should she study? I can't say should she studies. Yeah. She will pass the test. So it can replace if in one or two. Uh, yes, thank you so much. We need to use where Ms. Iman. Now, I would like to have a different sentence. You can also she use know. where. You can also use where here. So where itself can replace if. But we don't have where in the, in the if sentence. So you have to say where she to study. Where she to study is exactly the same like the two one above Above it. Okay, who can use where here? Who can use where? Okay, why where not was? We said, we said that um, because it's unreal. Yeah, yes, it's unreal past, so you don't have. If you said was it's fine. Okay, uh, okay. If used, if used was, it will be correct, but it's more, um, it's better to use to say if I wear to show it's not correct. So and here, when we if, say you, if I wear you, it's wrong to say if I was you. I wear a right? millionaire. No. Uh, I don't think it's wrong, it's correct, no, no, but it's correct. more appropriate and better yeah. to say if I wear. Uh, because it's, it's never impossible wrong. It's to correct. be you, so if I wear you. Yes, yes, yes. If I were you, but still you can say if I was you, this is really correct. It's never wrong. So if you're correcting your students words, so never say this is wrong. So if I were you, I would help poor people. Now I would like to use where here. So if I were a king, I'd help poor people. Where are a king? Where are a king? I'd help poor people. So you can use should in if one, if two, you can use where in if two only, even if it's not in the sentence itself. Now, I would like you to start with had. If you had driven more carefully, you wouldn't have had an accident. Start with had. Had you driven? Yes. You just, re had just replaces if. It's very, very quick. This, is the, quick. this is the third condition. Third right? condition, yes. Excellent. Uh, okay, so now without or but if, but for, without his help, I would have failed. That's that's a sentence. And we said that without means if not. I can say but for his help. It's the same yes. idea. Now I would like to use if it. If it hadn't been for. MashaAllah, Mr. Abdul. Guys, we have two versions of, it, uh, of the word if, if it. Yeah. I can say if it weren't for, <laughs> if yeah. you're using if to. Or you can say if it, had, if it hadn't been for. Yes. So here, if it hadn't been for his help, I would have because, we, because as we said before, this is the third conditional. Yeah. Yes, perfect. So in third conditional, you can use if it hadn't been for to replace if or to replace without. Okay, now, who can complete my sentence? If I had won the lottery, I space rich. I would have been, I would have been rich. Perfect. What else? Any other answer, guys? Hello. Uh, uh, some people disappeared from the chat. Uh, thank you, Ms. Iman. Thank you, Mrs. Iman. Thank you. Where are my other friends? Where? Perfect. Oh, again, Ms. 
Iman, yes. We have two Imans here. Two people are named Iman. Okay. Who else? I do, I think that uh, Mrs. Sana is looking for the comma and the semicolon. I guess. I guess so. She's busy. So would have been, would have been, would have been many answers. Come on, the answer. Been, you, one answer would work. Your question was answered. So why to repeat it again? Uh, where? We didn't answer it. Guys, why did I say would be? If I had won the lottery, I would be rich. What's that? Is it correct? Is that sentence correct or it's wrong? I think it's wrong. Okay, what else? Who else? Any more ideas? Guys, if you answer, please give me give me the the reason. So some people said correct, others said wrong. So why? Why same meaning? We have got one reason, same meaning. Okay. Okay, so uh, we have something called mixed if. Mixed. But mixed if it's present past or past present. Present past, that's past present. And by the way, um, as I said in the beginning, use if two, use if three, and use mixed if if you're if you're writing in the IELTS exam. The three items are perfect. So if I had won the lottery, this is in the past. I would be rich now. This is how it. This is how you can use mixed if. Of course, our students do not study this until they go to third secondary, or if you're studying, if you're studying high level. Yeah, so want, not yes. all, not all mm. our students know this. Although, yeah, mashallah, yeah. they are always using mixed if because they used one one part of if one with one part of if two and if three with if zero. MashaAllah, they are all they are always mixing if, but they don't know the rule. So that's why you consider them wrong. So here, that's mixed if. We use past with present. Someone will say, I hear, I hear. I hear someone is saying, oh, this is not present, this is past. Who can explain? Who can reply? Why did I say I would be rich is present? Something I wish. Okay, what else? Any other idea? Thank you, Mr. Abdullah. Who can help me? Because I have just told you that if two is present, I would be rich. That doesn't refer to the past. It's something I wish, like Mr. Abdullah said, I'm imagining myself to be rich. Yeah. Okay, here. Who can do this? If I were rich, I spaced that Ferrari you saw yesterday. Yes? Who's the first to react? Who's going to have the lead? Would buy, would buy, would buy, would buy, would buy, would buy, would buy. Any other ideas? Any other idea? Hmm? Guys, uh, there is a rule. There is a rule. Uh, not in English. That if, if like, uh, I don't know the number, but let's say that if we have like nine people and eight people choose the same thing, number nine must choose something different. Yeah, Miss, uh, Mrs. Dahlia may have a new idea. Thank you, Mrs. Iman. Will buy, would buy, not would buy. So, okay. So, guys, I can, I can use would buy if I didn't have the last part, which is you, we saw yesterday. So, my answer would be I would have both. This is mixed if present, past. Because if I did... If I were rich, if I were rich now, I would have bought it. I saw it yesterday and I'm rich. So I would have bought it. Thank you so much, Mrs. Dahlia. Yes, yes. Of course, guys, you can use mixed if, if you would like to use. This is what you deliver. This is a piece of information you deliver to people that something in the present affected something in the past or something in the past is affecting something in prison now. So this is prison past. Okay, 
Now this is mixed if I know it's so somehow difficult, but mashallah, you can just figure it out when you know that when you know the rule. You use one part in F2 and the, the second part is in F3. Uh, you can also use in different cases, but this is the most uh, better one. Can anyone explain this uh, rule to me? Can I say she were? I don't say she were, I say she was. Why is it where here? And Hello? The, the queen of England. Like because she's not the Queen of England. Yeah. She's acting like unreal past, as Mr. Abdullah referred before. Yes. When we use as if, as if she were, he's moving as if he, he, he were a king. He's not a king. But he's pretending. Yes, it's the same idea. I'm not crazy. Why are you staring at me? Here. Oh, who can explain I wish to us, guys? Please, someone. I don't I, I don't know this rule. I would like someone to, to explain I wish the, the rule. Yeah. Okay, Mr. Abdullah. Yes. Uh... If you wanted to talk about a wish in the present, in this case, we would use the past, past simple, of course. But if we wanted to speak about something we wish to happen in the future, we will uh, do like you do in this case. We'll try to use good or web. If we wanted to speak about something we regret, in, in, case, in this case, we will use the past, past perfect. Thank you so much, Mr. Abdullah. As Mr. Abdullah said, if you wish something to happen, you just say, I wish I could speak Italian. Yeah. Does this future, mean yes. I speak Italian now? No, I wish. I wish to have it in the future. No, so I say, I wish I could speak Italian. I don't speak Italian. Yeah. And do not forget, guys, that if I wish something for someone else, what should I say? So if I said, I wish Abdullah, I wish Ibrahim, would. I wish would. Sana, yes, would. or would. If you yeah, have yeah. different subjects, you have to use would. Yeah. So I wish he would speak Italian. Okay? So this is the main difference here, guys. And this is what we call I wish or if only. Do you remember the first part? It was only if. So yeah. do not confuse both of yeah. them. I have only if, which is like if. And I have if only, which is like I wish. Both are the same. Okay? And okay. here, more examples, more examples. If I were more careful, I wouldn't have lost all my money. Guys, which, which uh, if is this? One, two, or three? Three. Okay, thank you. Any other ideas? Waiting. Is it one, two, or three? The first sentence is three, but the second is uh, uh, complex. Maybe. Uh, yes, yes. yes. MashaAllah, mm. MashaAllah. So thank you so much, Dua. Thank you, Iman. This is mixed if. Mixed, mixed. yes. Because yes. mm. one part is present and the other part is, is past. And yeah. I say, if I were more careful, I'm not careful. And this is true. I'm not careful. Hussein is not careful. I wouldn't have lost all my money. I have already lost it because I'm not careful. I'm not a careful person. So this is mixed if. If I had saved more money in the past, if I had saved more money, I would buy a Lamborghini now. I didn't buy because I, had, I, had, I hadn't saved any. So this is, I told you that they are related together, prison and past, they affected each other. So these are two more examples for the same rule. Now, uh, have a look at these two examples. You can use them, but uh, as I said, use mixed if, use if two, if three. Now, you are going to, hmm, these are also more examples as if we have studied as if before, and it's, it's about time we went to bed. We should have been to bed now. So here, guys, here, uh, you have only five minutes. Uh, okay, okay, okay. 
no, I'm, I'm, I'm going to cancel this activity because we're using it later. Uh, I would like you to type me one if sentence now in the chat. Please type it, type it, do not say it. Let's see who's ready. Any, any condition, any, zero, one, two, three. If you can use two, three or mixed, that would be great. If, if you can, no need to bother yourself. You can use zero, you can use one or whatever. If I wear you, I would feel great. Alhamdulillah, I feel great. If you touch fire, you get burned. Yes, that's true, Mr. Ahmed. Mrs. Maram, you should be yes. muted. I'm so sorry. Uh, there is background noise. If I had a car, I would have visited her gada. Oh, Mr. Mahmoud, you can visit her gada without a car. I wish if the clothes were not as complicated and hard as they are. Why? Why, Mrs. Why, Mrs. Sana? They are so easy. If I woke up early, uh, if I wake up early, I will go to the beach. Okay, good luck, my friend. If I were you, I would uh, buy a car, Mrs. Wala, right? Okay, if you love me, you will buy it for me. Oh, of course, Dua. Of course, we all love you. So we all we're, we're going to buy it for you, inshallah. I don't know what is it, so I will buy it. I'll I consider it as a sweet or a candy. Okay, who else? Who else? If I had money, had I money, I would uh, travel around. Perfect, Mr. Abdullah. If I were rich, I would travel to California. Oh, I dream to go to California, Allah. If she had studied, she would have passed the exam. Yes, but she didn't study. Okay, thank you so much. Now, now answer my question, please. Can you change sentence number one into passive? Yes, can you change sentence number one into passive? My car will be repaired by a mechanic. I, I will have my car, I, I will have my, my car repaired. Both are correct. Yeah. Now go to number two. Number two. Yes. My car will be repaired. I will get my car repaired. Perfect. I will get my car repaired. Yes. Number two, any answer? The prisoners were said they to- thought that the prisoners yeah. had escaped. Yes, the, the prisoners? Were said to have escaped. Okay, excellent. So the prisoners were thought to have escaped. This is how you show escaped. past some past, yeah. to have escaped. This is past. Yes. Uh, no, Radwa, because you're, you're sending us uh, the link. Okay. So now this is my new question to you guys. What's your favorite sandwich? What's your favorite sandwich? Any ideas? Cheeseburger, yes, 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 great. <laughs> Who else like likes cheeseburger like Aya? All of us. Burger, burger, Big Mac, yes, 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 yes. Big Mac, yes, it's forty-five uh, pounds now, right? As I see in the ad. Okay, so this, uh, so yesterday because you're good friends. MashaAllah, you're super, Iman. So Iman will prepare the, 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 the dinner today, inshallah. So here, we're, we're covering the same point. We're talking about the Big Mac. Because you all love the Big Mac, so here is the chef, and she prepared the Big Mac for you. And of course, of course, you know that um, for Big Mac, you have... Can anybody explain... What's the relation between Big Mac and the paragraph?
Any ideas? Mm, you may want to explain the parts of a paragraph. Um, uh, you have the lead, you have the mic. You just say whatever you like, Mr. Abdullah. Yeah. Yes, so Ms. Sahar says that we refer to the parts of the paragraph, yes. how to structure a paragraph. Yes, this is really great. So a paragraph is really like a Big Mac. Yeah. It, it has the same ideas on the top and at the bottom, which is referred to it's the two like buns sandwich. that we have. Yes, it's like a sandwich. So you have the top bun here, which is the topic sentence, which is the main idea. Support. And you have the same idea, but in different words as the bottom bun. Um, okay, so can you imagine your paragraph without these two? How can you how can you hold the sandwich, guys? You will never know, right? Yeah, yeah. So this is why we compare a paragraph to Big Mac, because it has main idea, the topic sentence, and the conclusion, they are the same, but we use different words. That's why they are different. They, are, they, they don't look like, alike. And inside, you put everything you know. You put everything you like. Some people meet, put meat. Some people put chicken. Some people use tomatoes, uh, onions, lettuce, ketchup, mayonnaise, or whatever you, hot sauce. So th these are all your addings. They are different according to you, what you would like to add. We call this, uh, let's say that we, we have supporting ideas. So you use a topic sentence, then you support, support, support. These are the tomato, the lettuce, the ketchup, the hot sauce. They are all supporting the main idea. So guys, here now, uh, Mrs. Mrs. Radwa is going to send you a link now. I would like you, I would like you, she's, she's, she, she has two options. She's going to send you a file and she's going to send you a link in which if you click the link, you go to the file and you download it. So just see what fits you and do it. And I'm going to divide you into rooms. You're going to study this part now. And when you come back, you explain it to me. We have just given you, um, we have given you a, an idea about what you're doing. You sent it to me privately, send it to them. Sorry. Okay, so, so guys, now you're downloading the file and send the file itself. You're downloading the file now. It's only to cover the last part. We have already discussed the idea. I would like you to go into rooms, you study them together, and you can just, when we come back, you can present this. I'm not going to explain it. You will explain it, how we can structure our paragraphs. Now you have the link. So guys, tell me in the chat, please. Tell me in the chat. Uh, have we finished the session? No. Yes or no? Thank you so much, Aya and Wale. Okay. Uh, are you going to download the file? Are you going to download the file? Perfect. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Are you working on the file on your own? Are you studying alone? You're studying in groups. Okay, thank you so much. Yes. So all what you're doing is you're gonna read and you discuss the ideas together. You may choose someone to read and someone to explain. You may, everyone read, everyone reads on his or her own. Then you discuss the ideas together. When you come back, am I the person who's going to explain? Yes or no? Never. I will never explain. You're the one. So every group is going to choose a representative to speak for them. You may choose two, you may, everyone may say one point of, one uh, piece of information. So feel free to do so. Now send the, send the link again. I'm sorry, Radwa, send I the link again. I, I Here's the link. 
You want me to send it again to everyone? Yes, yes. Okay. So guys, you have you have only 10 to 15 minutes and no more. I guess there will be 10, 10 minutes. 10 minutes to go through the slides quickly. So that's it's a better idea if you it's a better idea if you just divide it. So if everyone just read three, three pages or four or five pages, you will finish on time. So read your pages and tell your friends what is there. Or you may read together, it's up to you. Now we have uh, three rooms, yeah, uh, three rooms. Okay. I sent you an invitation, guys, so please accept. Okay, Radwa now. Radwa, it's okay now. You're frozen. Yes, I see people are running into the rooms. Thank you so much. We have Mr. Ahmed, Mr. Ahmed. Yes, Mrs. Maram, you should join the room.
السلام عليكم Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes, yes clear. Thank you. Thank you so much. How were the rooms? Great, mashallah. With the yes. Do you really think they were great? Why are yes, you so sir. down? Why are you so down if yes. they were great? Great. No, I'm not down. Um, I, I enjoyed okay. the conversation with Miss Delia. Mashallah, she's a great. Mashallah, you're lucky. You're lucky. You're lucky. Mashallah, you have some great uh, roommates. Okay, who's going to speak first? Room number one. Who's uh, your I think representative? It's, uh, uh, each one is going to speak about his part. I think. Uh, let's start by. Uh, it was. I'm sorry. Welcome, Miss Delia. Who was the first? Room one? Yes, room, room one. one. I, I'm not going to call names. You know who was in room one and who was mm. who's ready to speak. I think, Iman, you were the first one. Okay. Iman. Hello. It's Maram. It's Mrs. Maram. It's not Aib, Allah. It's, it's, it's normal. <laughs> it's Let normal. the boys play. <laughs> Okay, so <laughs> okay, okay, it's fine. Mashallah, may Allah bless your children. Okay, guys, as Mrs. Maram said, it's Aib, so please come. I called your name many times. Shall I start Iman, from the beginning? Iman, where, where are you, Iman? Mrs. Secure? Sana, are you are you know. going to speak first? Um, oh, we, we didn't have room one. I remembered now. We didn't have room one. Room no, two. We have. No, we, we have. have. <laughs> I called the name for the people like 10 times. Yeah, me, me here, me here. I'm sorry. Imagine I'm we're with you. <laughs> we're with you. Okay. okay. <laughs> Go on. Yeah, here we talk about how can we write an EC. Um, how can we write the paragraph in EC? Uh, of course, the paragraph took about one idea. Uh, uh, so, uh, sorry, the AC took about one idea and the paragraph also took about one idea. Uh, the paragraph um, contains topic sentence and supporting sentence and concluding sentence. Uh, the supporting sentence um, main idea only. And after that, uh, in supporting sentence, I took about the details, more details. Um, in concluding sentence, uh, we need to restate the main idea without repeating any part. Don't uh, repeat what can I say before. Uh, I say the, the, the total for this idea. Yes. And after that, we plan. Yeah, Ms. Radwa. <laughs> yes, yes. No, 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 no. <laughs> Just complete, complete. Yeah. Uh, we planning how can we write the AC? How can... Uh, uh, I divide the, the paragraph. How can we write the paragraph? Mm, that's enough. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Allah, this is great. Thank you so much. Yes. Okay. Okay, so uh, are you going to add something, Radwa? No, it's. Uh, I think Wala, well, she's going to complete because it's uh, the, the next part. Complete. Okay, Ms. Wala. Okay, uh, for uh, the first uh, sentence, okay, it tells us about the main idea of the paragraph, and this is very important, okay, this is the main idea or, the, uh, or about the topic, and then um, uh, this is uh, the introduction, okay, of the paragraph, and then uh, the body of the paragraph, this is, uh, means this is uh, to give supporting sentences, okay, and uh, <clears throat> with, the, with more details about the main idea. And we, we you can we can add examples, okay, uh, for each um, one. And at the last, the conclusion sentence. This is about the topic, but with but with another uh, words and related to the main idea in the introduction. That's why Mashallah. I, that I know. Mashallah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Oh, Room two, cool. if you would like to add something, feel free to speak. Room two. Yeah. Go ahead, brother. 
game stories. And I think one of the most important points we spoke about in writing an essay is the point of coherence and cohesion. Yeah. In order- Tell yes. me more. I don't yeah, know yeah. what is coherence and what yes, is coherence. Yes, yes. As for coherent, coherence uh, means that how to write your essay in a logical order in order to make your essay easy to follow, easy to understand. Uh, as for cohesion, cohesion, uh, how to use your linking words in order to make your essay, come, as I said before, understood for your readers. Yes. MashaAllah, MashaAllah, perfect as usual, my dear brother. Who else in room two would like to speak? Anyone? Dua, which room were you in? Dua, Dua were you in? Which one? I have no clue. Who oh, were in the same room like you, Dua? Who were your roommates? Would you like to, to add something, Dua? I have no clue what they said. They just like spoke some stuff that I did not understand any single part. <sighs> okay. And <laughs> you said, okay, I thought you're going to continue. Okay, but if they said if they said something that you didn't really comprehend then, so you should have asked them, guys, what are you doing? Or you should have just started yourself if you if you thought that you, you can cope up with what they're saying. Okay, room number three. Room number three. Zania. Zania. I, uh, hello, I don't know if I, the number of my room, I forget it actually. Yeah, it's room three. <laughs> room three. <laughs> it's Go ours. Yeah. Like, I can tell uh, the main idea, just in the main idea. Um, the slide starts to talk about how can we, uh, can, we can elaborate our ideas to form sentences, then compound sentences, then complex to, to build in our, the structure, the structure of our essay. Then, uh, the slides start to teach us about how to uh, the structure of each paragraph that each paragraph should start with a topic sentence which uh, should attract the reader and has the main idea as well then after this topic sentence we should add the, the supporting details uh, they might have some examples or just some information to support the main um, idea which, which was mentioned in the topic sentence. Then at the end of the paragraph, we can conclude it with the, the concluding sentence. After uh, the slides talk, uh, um, uh, just uh, explain the, uh, the structure of the paragraph, they move to the uh, structure of the essay, which has more than one paragraph. So we have to plan for our essay using the paragraphs. <laughs> so we have to think which paragraph we have to start. Then we had an example about tigers. And the example was very clear because uh, when he suggested to talk about tigers, he uh, suggested three main ideas. So each idea will take one paragraph. For example, if we are going to talk why tigers are in danger. So um, one reason may be because of uh, the cigarettes. Uh, uh, the second, I forget it. The third, I forget it. <laughs> anyway. Mashallah, so, mashallah. I have a strong memory. Yeah. Perfect. So it, each paragraph should have the main idea and he suggested the supporting details. For example, why, uh, why, and I think um, example, then details. Till, till here, and I stopped reading. <laughs> <laughs> MashaAllah. Okay, uh, are there anyone, is there anyone in room three who would like to speak? Uh, okay. So, mashallah, you have covered you have covered mostly everything that we should say about the the topic. As you said, guys, we here have the structure of the paragraph here as the language as we refer to, and paragraphing is extremely important. And you mentioned you mentioned that we should use different sorts of sentences: simple, complex, compound, compound, complex, and you should use also linking, you should link sentences together. So here, uh, we, you focused, you should delight that every paragraph should cover only one, one idea. This is what we should be learning, what we should be teaching our students, 
because as you know that uh, one of the main problems in writing is that students just try to cover everything so if they remember that their aunt visited them yesterday they could include this when they describe a football match that they attended at school so they say while they are talking about the football match at school they would say and my aunt visited us yesterday why because he just would like to stuff sentences in the paragraph uh, this is why we should be using um, only one idea would we cover one idea for e for each paragraph if i'd like to move to another idea i should make an, a new paragraph and we also you also refer to how to plan my paragraph before I even start writing. And how we're going to plan this, as Mrs. Dahlia says, that you should list, list your ideas. As we know that we have a topic sentence, which, which, has the, the, which is the, month, the main focus of, of what we're talking about. And you should support it with some supporting sentences. You, you mention examples, you give details, you um, uh, mention facts, and then the concluding sentence or the conclusion, which is the same like the topic sentence, but you just change your words. Okay, so let's imagine that this is the topic sentence. Okay. So this is the first, this is the main idea. It's so simple, so clear. And I don't, I don't, um, uh, I don't focus on some specific information. I just say a lot of people enjoy classical music. They listen to that type of music uh, like a lot. Then you start support, support this idea with examples or explanation or you mention facts, so you say, in fact, songs classified as classical music were downloaded over 20 million times on uh, last month. So why did I use this supporting sentence to talk about the main idea that people love classical music? So this is one supporting idea. So um, this is the, 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 main, the main focus. I give evidence, I explain, I give examples. So here, I can add another example when I say when I say that it is clear then that classical music enjoys a high degree of popularity. It's the same thing. After the second, I mentioned one example, then I started another. So planning in advance is extremely important. I know, mashallah, that you know this. We have a different topic now. We're going to, we're done with the idea of music. We're talking about tags are in danger because of people. This is the main topic. I can cover three ideas here. I talk about agriculture. I talk about Chinese medicine. I cover the, the, the idea of logging. If you just look at these three ideas alone, you think that they are totally away, away from the, the main topic. But let's see how they are related. If you read this example, Go quickly here. Although they are beloved by many tigers, face many dangers. This is the main topic. This is the main idea. Look here. This is the first example, which we said to be the, um, uh, the agriculture part. The natural environment is being destroyed by the expansion of agri agriculture. So we're, we're removing their habitat to uh, for farming. Yes, of course, planning comes in the pre-writing stage. Yes. And then we moved. they also being hunted and sold for Chinese medicine. Now I knew what's the relation between the word Chinese medicine and tigers. Before, I didn't have the, the information. I don't know that uh, they are being made as Chinese medicine. And for these reasons, here, uh, logging is another big problem. Because of course, we know what why logging is in a, is a problem for them because we're destroying their habitat. Okay. Um, so that was one trial. That was one trial. Please. Uh, uh, okay. Okay. So that was one trial, and I can go in the uh, in depth, guys. We can just move. In, improve this trial. This is a draft. And inshallah, when we start the writing part, 
you're going to be given tasks and we would like you to start planning. So you make a first draft, then you just try the final draft at the end. So here, for the agriculture thing, I guess that Mrs. Dahlia was trying to cover. She said, why expanding in agriculture? Why? We, we said that be due to the expanding in agriculture, uh, we're destroying the habitat of tigers. So can you tell me why do we expand in agriculture? Can you tell me how damaging is this for tigers? Can you give me mm -hmm. examples? So if you added these three details, then your paragraph will be better. And you, have, well, you will cover the, the, the idea perfectly. Same for the Chinese medicine. You say, why do we use tigers in, to, to make Chinese medicine? And how damaging is this to them? And if you have some more details, you can mention them. Same for the last idea, which is logging. Okay. And we come to the point here. If you read this, and I'm going to let you read this uh, alone, you, you know that or you see that this draft is much better than the previous one. Why? Because it has more details about the ideas that you have already covered. And we come, um, uh, to the idea that Mr. Abdullah has mentioned, it's coherence and cohesion. Uh, I forgot what's the difference between them. That's why I'm asking you now to tell me what is coherence. Who can explain? It means uh, logical order for ideas. Yes. MashaAllah, perfect. Thank yes. you so much. This is how you order your ideas, how you order them, how you logically put them in order. And what about cohesion, the second one? That is the linking between the sentences. It's Thank very so linked much. and well structured. How you're moving smoothly from one idea to another without yeah. jumping. So that using trans trans yes. transitional yes. words, using transitional words. Thank you so uh, much. Yes, yes. And you can also use semicolon, Mrs. Sana, for you to know. I know you yes. love that. So, yeah, before, however. So, <laughs> yes. So, guys, if you're, using, if you're using this coherence and cohesion, you'll find that he, your reader is following you. So, imagine that one, one person just wrote the word, and while we were in the stadium and watching the match, oh, my aunt came to my house. You're going to destroy his mentality. He's not going to, to continue reading because his mind will stop functioning. He's trying to find the relation between your two sentences. And here comes the role of cohesion and coherence. Thank you so much for following us. Uh, this is the end of this session. But I'm not going to leave until you mention one thing that you learned today in the chat. Please type me in the chat one thing that you learned today. I'm waiting, even one simple thing. Yes, mixed if, oh, I know that you're going to say this. Passive and active, active and passive. You can write ideas, by the way. You can give me an example. You don't have to write the, the title of the lesson. Plan your paragraph. Excellent, excellent, mashallah. How to write a paragraph, perfect. If closes, oh, you still, you're still, you, you, you still don't like it. How can we write an essay? One paragraph, one idea. Excellent. Perfect. Perfect. You have to follow the chat, guys. It's really beneficial. The structure of a paragraph. Yes. Great. 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 Okay. Uh, so all, all is well that ends well. So I'm going to